I know why you're here, and I'm happy to give it to you. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and today is Tuesday. It's September 10th. Now, what we do on this show is to focus in on a hot penny stock. I trade stocks under five bucks every day from bell to bell, and I'm always looking for a hot penny stock to share with you. Well, today we're going to take a look at ticker PAUIF, Premier American Uranium. This is a mining company. It was brought to my attention that I haven't covered a mining company in a very long time. And it's true. I can't remember the last mining company I covered. It was probably lithium. We were covering a lot of lithium mine companies because of the EV boom. Well, now with hydrogen coming into play, cars are on the road, we've got hydrogen available for them, lithium is kind of falling to the wayside. So it's like, what mining company am I going to talk about? I could fall on gold. Gold's always hot. Eh, it's got to be something better than that. Uranium. We are talking about green energy here, folks. Our nuclear reactors use uranium. And nuclear reactors have zero CO2 emissions. We've been using uranium for years, folks. It has given us an abundant source of energy. Not to mention our military uses it, our medical sector uses it. Uranium is very, very valuable to us, but in the biggest sense, energy. And right now we need more energy than ever. And with AI coming on board, I'm sure in the next five to 10 years, we're gonna need more energy than we can even imagine. And where are we gonna get it? I think that's gonna be uranium. So we're gonna look at a uranium mining company because I think it's prudent. So PAUIF. She finished the day today at a buck 20 and she was up about three and a half percent. Now, this is a hot penny stock on the OTC. She's on the middle tier, the QB, which we like to refer to as the better tier. It's better than the pinks because the pinks have very little validated information. When you come up to the QB, first off, your stock has to be at least a penny. You fall under a penny for too long, they'll throw you back down to the pink. But the most important thing is they become more trustworthy, more transparent because they have a CPA come in now and audit their financials. These are actual factual numbers we can use to weigh the company up. Those are called fundamentals. So the company is in a great place on the OTC market. Speaking of validated information, we've got a verified profile and they tell us they've got independent directors. Now, the only reason I know you list them here on this site is when you're serious about uplisting. Now, I don't know. They may have just come from the pink to the QB and already used them. Maybe. I haven't done a deep dive. But they may have aspirations of going to the QX or the NASDAQ. I don't know that either. I just see we've got them listed here, which is always a good sign. So what exactly is this company about? Well, as I said, they mine uranium. They mine it in America. And would you believe it's a Canadian company? And they solely work in America. Premier American Uranium is focused on the consolidation, exploration, and development of uranium projects in the United States. One of Pura's key strengths is the extensive land holdings in two prominent uranium regions in the United States. I think they need to update that because over here at their website, premiumur.com, they tell us one of Pura's key strengths is the extensive land holdings in three prominent, proven uranium-producing regions in the United States. One, the Grants Mineral Belt out of New Mexico. Two, the Great Divide Basin in Wyoming. And three, U-Raven Mineral Belt in Colorado. Now, the company's got some strong uranium investors. They have Sackman Cove Partners, ISO Energy, Mega Uranium, and other corporate and institutional investors and the company itself has a strong management team as well. Now, we're not going to dive into the management. I'm going to let you do that, and you better do that. Doing due diligence on management is probably the most important research you're going to do, folks. Management is the backbone of the company. They can make or break that company. doesn't matter how great their business model is or what product they've got. A good company can be ruined by bad management. This looks like a real good crew to me. And I can tell you this much, there's no newcomers here. Everybody there has been in the sector for a very long time. Now, let's get some information about these projects. We're going to dive into this corporate presentation, which they like to call a deck. You can think of it as a brochure, 
Lots of easy to read information in here, but of course, we're not gonna go through it all, but I have picked out some key information I wanna share with you. Focusing in on their projects, how many have they got? They've got six projects amongst the three states. They have one in exploration up in Wyoming. They've got four in Colorado, three are in exploration, and one is in development right now. And then they just acquired one, which we're gonna read about in the news, Chebalita. This one is down in New Mexico. Now there is a lot of information we could go through about these projects. And if you're interested, it's here. Just dive into this brochure and start scrolling and reading. It's all in miner's language. So you'll probably understand it more than I do. But generally speaking, looking at the historical production for the areas that they're working in, the New Mexico Grants Mineral Belt has produced 347 million pounds in this one area. This produced 37% of all U.S. production. That is huge, folks. And yeah, it's huge. This is the fourth largest uranium district in the world. Their Great Divide in Wyoming, this has produced 230 million pounds since they discovered it. And this is one of the least exploited basins in Wyoming. What does that tell you, folks? There's a lot of opportunity there. It's untapped, ready to be taken. The last one they have is in Colorado. This is U Raven Mineral Belt. It has already produced 80 million pounds since 1945, and they say it is ranked fifth in investment attractiveness. Well, how about that? If you're looking for a sexy mine, looks like you Raven Mineral Belt in Colorado is number five. May be worth checking out. Now, there is a lot of attention being given to this sector right now because it is a green sector. We need energy, folks. We need a lot of energy, more and more of it. And we don't want to be putting CO2 off into the atmosphere. And the best source of energy we got is uranium. So there's a lot of money being poured into this sector right now, silently, behind the scenes. They're even passing legislation to protect us. We've got two pieces of legislation that have passed. One is called the 2040. This prohibits Russian uranium imports. We rely on imports of uranium for most of our supply. Not anymore. We're trying to turn that on ourselves. And we have it here. And Russia used to give us a lot of it. We ain't taking none of theirs no more. The other piece of legislation was the COP28. This is a group of 21 countries in the world that have all gotten together and committed to triple nuclear power output by 2050. They are serious about this, folks. And as you can see, we've got some huge dollar figures here. This is coming from different agencies of the federal government, the U.S. Department of Energy, the Inflation Reduction Act. This is not being overlooked, folks. Uranium is necessary. It is the only thing that produces as much energy without any CO2. We have nothing to replace it. Hydrogen is replacing lithium. What do we have to replace uranium? Not a thing. So I think now is a good time to be looking at this. And in saying that, this probably isn't a day trade. I can't think of any mining companies right now that are day trades. There's just no volatility around mining right now. Even though they're critical, even though they're crucial, we need all the minerals that they're pulling out of the ground. We've got our eyes set on other things. But I'm thinking uranium is going to start getting a heck of a lot more focus. And you may want to be a part of that game. Now, they tell us down here that the U.S. has a long history of uranium mining and was the world's leading producer of uranium from 1953 to 1980, with peak yearly production of up to 43 million pounds. Can you imagine that? 43 million pounds of uranium in one year. Compare that to 2023 when we did 50,000 pounds of uranium. Huge difference, folks. We virtually stopped mining uranium. This output diminished rapidly due to uneconomic spot prices. Uranium just got too cheap and the fulfillment of military demand and has not yet recovered. We are still in a hard pinch. We need to start mining it. And this company's ready to go. They are getting paperwork into the government, getting their mines tested, seeing how much minerals is in there. They're getting ready to go right now, folks. 
Speaking of right now, folks, let's go take a look at the relative volume for the company right now. Holy cow, look at that. See, I told you, mining companies are under the radar right now. I can't think of any mineral that's hot when it comes to mining, getting a lot of attention on the charts. Over the last 30 days, POF has gotten 5.1 thousand shares. Today, she did 1.1 thousand shares. Definitely under the radar. But you got to remember, folks, we're up here on the OTC, which doesn't get a lot of volume. Out of 12,200 companies, there was only 1.7 billion shares divided amongst them all. Lots and lots of companies got no shares today. This company was lucky. Taking a look at the share structure for POF, well, that's not bad. Outstanding share count is a mere 33, 34 million. Now, I don't know what the insiders own, haven't done a deep dive, so I can't subtract that from the outstanding share count to figure out what our float might be. But I can tell you that our float isn't going to be any higher than the outstanding share count. So it won't be higher than 33 million and could be considerably less. Market cap for the company, we're just about ready to hit 39 million. Financials. Ah, we got nothing over here. Nothing annually, nothing quarterly. We don't even get a balance sheet. But they do have a financial, so we've got information. Jumping into the most recent financial, I can tell you this, they don't have any revenues, not yet. The company is in the exploration stage, setting up for production right now. But that doesn't mean they don't have any assets. Looking over their most recent financial, comparing June 30th of this year to December 31st of last year, we've had an increase of 2.7 million in assets, jumping from 5 million up to 7.7 .7 million. But their liabilities took a jump too. They went from about a half a million up to 1.7. But you do all the math, we do have stockholder equity of over $6 million. We don't have any revenues, but we've got stockholder equity, so we are not holding a bag here. Taking a look at the filings and disclosures, we have nothing here to consider, and we've already looked at the most recent financial, so let's take a look at that news. Now, I've gone back to the end of June here. When they closed an acquisition, they got 100% of American Future Fuel. And from this, they got the Chebolita Project in New Mexico. We are going to dive in and read a little bit of this. But I want you to see they are working on their projects, doing a lot of drilling right now. There's a lot of surveys and tests going on. Now, diving into that most recent piece of news here that came out on the 5th of July, Premier American Uranium shifts to growth ahead of schedule at Chebolita in New Mexico. They are 12 months ahead of schedule. That's a big thing right there. The Chebolita project holds potential for significant resource expansion, which contains over 400 million pounds of uranium and still remains largely unexplored. Folks, that is potential out the... <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of potential, folks. Unexplored, and they know there's like 400 million pounds sitting there. They go on to tell us that Pure was established to acquire, explore, and develop uranium projects in the U.S. to address a structural supply shortfall, particularly evident in the domestic supply chain, which is undergoing a marked renaissance as the U.S. prioritizes energy independence climate and emission targets. And that's really what's going on right now, isn't it, folks? We are looking at green energies. We're looking at ways to cut down on CO2. How is uranium not going to be in that list? Pure now has a strong foothold in three of the top uranium districts in the U.S., including New Mexico, Wyoming, and Colorado. Going forward, we expect to focus much of our efforts on project-level work, which means they're trying to get to production. Now, there's one other thing here I want to share with you. This is kind of important. This is all the way down here at the bottom, if I've still got it. There it is. With the recent passage into law of the ban on the import of Russian-produced low-enriched uranium, the U.S. unlocked $2.7 billion in funding, which along with Canada, France, Japan, and the U.K. have committed a total of $4.2 billion to invest in the development of a secure and reliable global nuclear energy supply chain. In addition, we have just seen a separate 
$2.7 billion RFP issued by the U.S. Department of Energy for the purchase of Lou from domestic sources, specifically designed to jumpstart domestic nuclear fuel production. Folks, when you got this sort of backup, you know that this sector is going to take off. It's slow right now. It is literally under the radar. And when you look at the chart, you can see that. But she is growing ever so slightly. Let's go take a look at it now. So we're going to chart premium American uranium on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. We've got PAUIF opened up to a six-month, four-hour view, and that is the entire chart for the company. This was a spin out by Consolidated Uranium, I believe, came on the market in December, right here. And she came on at roughly a dollar, which is roughly where she's at right now. She took a big jump initially, going from a dollar to two and a quarter. Took a dip, then jumped up to 235. Had a serious drop, then a serious pop, and then went into a tailspin all the way down to that dollar support again. Now, right now, she is working on crossing all of those SMAs, took a strong jump. She has fallen back, and she is now on top of the 50. She was underneath everything before. Now, she's on top of the 50, looking at that 200, which is still a long ways away. But everything is setting up nicely. Our 200 haul is just about ready to go level, and it'll start to climb. The 200 haul has as much authority and as much power as your 200 day MA. So when this starts to climb underneath the price, I look for the price to start to rise. Our volume here seems to be getting stronger and stronger. Let's back up and get a better picture. Yes, you can see how light she was here. She started getting some strong pops and now it's starting to get thick. Our oscillators, they're a little weak but they are all starting to climb right now. It's tough to see. Let's see if we can focus in on that. She is just now starting to push up, just like our MACD. It is just starting to cross up and over, and our RSI is climbing. Oh, it's a little cool. That's down at 52, but as long as she's climbing, I'm content. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, not a lot of volume, so we don't have a lot of bars here. All of these yellow lines, in case you didn't know, those are my supports and resistances. Underneath them is where the price will normally slow down, and then all over top, it'll start to speed up, kind of like speed bumps. Well, she was down here at her low on that support of a buck five, started crossing all of these MAs on the one hour chart. She's got on top of the 50, took a big bounce, got quite excited when she got up there. Went sideways, she's floating on her nine day. Look here, she's come up and she has tapped that 200 beautifully. Has come back down, she is now testing the 50 and she is coming back up. Now she's sitting on a strong support at $1.18. All of our MAs are climbing right now, pushing towards that 200, so it's looking good. Our oscillators down here, they are still a little weak, but they are starting to climb. They are starting to come back up. Take a look at our five day, nah, let's make it five day, 15 minute. Five minute can be a little thin. This is a little thin as the volume is. We had a high here of $1.37 five days ago, came down to a buck 13. We were underneath our 50 day SMA here. Bounced up, we're fighting to get over that 50 and now she's done it. Sitting on top of the 50, oscillators are, are planted. They're flat. All of them are totally flat right now. I like this company, folks, not for tomorrow or the next day. I would be looking for an entry right now because she's so bloody low. But I'm expecting, man, like over the next year, I'm expecting this stock to start to grow because energy is a big deal. Seriously, when you do a study on how much power AI consumes and how much AI is exploding right now, we're going to need power like you can't imagine. And where are we going to get it if not from nuclear reactors? Uranium is the key to all of this, folks. I like uranium. I like this company. I think it is going to grow. Be patient with this one. This is a good, solid investment, in my opinion. Do some more due diligence, folks. I left a lot on the table for you. And that's okay. Because the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.